Well, this 55-page decision out of Cowlitz County in Washington State by Judge Gary Basher of the Superior Court out there is really catching fire in the Second Amendment and intellectual circles of this great country. And what's also catching attention is the decision by this really sweaty, as best I can tell, a commissioner, a sweaty civil servant, to have stayed this decision in a matter of minutes. We're going to talk all about this and how it's starting to catch fire in the Second Amendment community and People are taking notice of this all across this great country. Stay tuned. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of many books, including Disarmed, what the Ukraine War teaches Americans about the right to bear arms. All right, folks, so we've already reported on, and other outlets have reported on, this decision by Judge Gary Basher that said that Washington State's ban on magazines that held more than 10 rounds violated the Second Amendment. It's pretty clear that it does. All you have to do, because you're dealing with an arms ban case, is you apply the Heller in common use test, uh, put the burden on, of proof on the government to show that a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds is not in common use, which is really the government's burden to show they're not in common use. And of course, point out that a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds, if you ban magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, you have actually banned an entire category of firearms. So even if you want to assume for the sake of argument that a magazine is not an arm in the same way that ink is not part of free speech or money is not part of free speech under the First Amendment and so on and so on, even if you want to assume a magazine is not an arm, which is it is for the purposes of the Second Amendment, but let's assume it isn't for the sake of argument. It doesn't really matter because you're going to get the same outcome because, again, by banning a magazine, you've effectively banned guns, modern-day firearms that can fire more than 10 rounds without having to reload. So you've essentially banned an entire category of a modern-day firearm in the same way that the District of Columbia had banned an entire category category of firearms in the Heller case when they banned handguns. So either way, there's no way in my view the anti-gun movement can win these arguments. And that is exactly what Judge Gary Basher of the Superior Court of uh, Washington State in Cowlitz County found by granting summary judgment and entering a preliminary injunction in favor of the uh, Second Amendment against the state of Washington. Now, what this is starting to pick up steam and people are taking notice because Stephen Halbrook, as you have probably met him on the show, you may have read several of his books on the Second Amendment and the history. He's a Supreme Court litigator. He's hard, handled some big cases for the Supreme Court involving gun rights and has written a bunch of briefs and a bunch of books on the Second Amendment. He wrote a very powerful article that just came out on the Volokh conspiracy. We've talked about the Volokh conspiracy before. It's a very influential, conservative, uh, intellectual, academic, libertarian-oriented website. A bunch of ways to characterize the Volokh conspiracy. A lot of deep, serious thinkers and intellectuals write for that blog. Very important, uh, very well-regarded um, source of information for serious legal scholars and the like. And Stephen Halberg just published a piece that really lays out the step-by-step -step craziness of a commissioner, a commissioner, not a judge of the Washington Supreme Court, stay in the decision of an actual judge, Judge Gary Basher. Specifically, I'm gonna put a link to this down below, but Stephen Haber pointed out that what's shocking is that Judge Basher's order, and this is interesting, think about this for a moment, Judge Basher's order was sent to the lawyers in the case at 3.05 p.m. 3.05 p.m. I'm sorry, I think it was 3.04 p.m. according to the article. 3.04 p.m. By 4.15, okay, that's just a little bit more than an hour, the Assistant Attorney General for Washington State had emailed a motion to stay the injunction to all the lawyers and said he was filing it with the Washington State Supreme Court. Now, that's a 32-page motion. So again, we talked about this previously. You have a 55-page decision by Judge Basher. You now have a 32-page motion filed with the Washington Supreme Court. Right? That's over 80 pages of heavy duty legal materials that and that's not even reviewing any of the sources you're doing, looking at a transcript or anything. You're just talking about the opinion and the motion, nothing else. Well, guess what? The case 
Uh, remember, name, remember the name of this case is, of course, State of Washington versus Gators Custom Guns. Now, Gators Custom Guns was fighting for the Second Amendment. And guess what? Gators Custom Gun never, I repeat, did not, did not have an opportunity to respond to the 32-page motion submitted by Washington State. So Washington State files a 32-page motion. Judge Basher has a 55-page opinion in support of the Second Amendment. And the Washington Supreme Court, including this commissioner, Michael E. Johnson, never asked for Gator Custom Guns to, what do you think? Should you win? Should you lose? No, because this commissioner, a sweaty civil servant as best I can tell, a sweaty civil servant, a commissioner, not elected or anything, he emails an order staying Judge Basher's decision. Did you hear what he just said? A sweaty civil servant commissioner enters an order staying the decision of a judge, Judge Gary Basher, who spent a long time preparing a 55-page position. And when did Michael Johnson email this order that stayed it in 504? Think about that. So here you have the commissioner for the Washington Supreme Court, Michael Johnson, had all these materials for ready, 49 minutes. You know what I just said? He had in his possession, according to the reports in the Stephen Habrick piece down below, he had the 55-page order and the 32-page motion from the state of Washington for 49 minutes. That's it. 49 minutes. I will tell you right here, right now, it takes me more than 49 minutes to figure out what I'm going to talk about on this channel, read about what I'm going to talk about, and then talk about it. It takes me more than 49 minutes to talk about the Second Amendment. Not, not, And I'm not making a decision on behalf of the state of Washington involving fundamental constitutional rights. I'm not making that decision, right? I'm not a judge. It's not what I do. And if, you know, if I were taking making decisions that would impact and have a direct impact on people's lives and freedom, Freedom, well, I would take that even more seriously than I take this channel. I take this channel very seriously, of course. But now if I'm actually responsible for the livelihood, the freedom and liberties and constitutional rights of others as a judge or public official, I would take this job even more seriously as well as you would and we would expect you to because you are now a public servant. And here you have Michael Johnson in 49 minutes, simply as best I can tell, it seems my the way it happened here is really rubber stamping the decision. Now, what's quite interesting is that Stephen Halbert Wrote, wrote the following in his article. Check this out here. This is what he writes. Stephen Halbrick writes, quote, either the commissioner is a world record speed reader or more likely didn't bother to read the opinion or the motion for he issued the stay in lightning speed. Maybe he just needed enough time to read which side the state was on. Wow. Harsh language. Harsh language. And to make things even worse, if you go on, Stephen Habrick points out that in his order stand, he really quotes public safety. Here is what Habrick says in quoting Commissioner Johnson. In his ruling on the stay, Commissioner Johnson recited the public safety issues concerning the proliferation of large capacity magazines compatible with assault weapons. He did not mention the public interest in enforcing constitutional rights. Those factors together with the speed with which the stay was issued gives the appearance of automatic bias in favor of the magazine ban. I could not have said it better myself. That's exactly right. It's like he did not take this very seriously. Now, what's interesting is that under the Washington Constitution, the justices of the Washington Supreme Court are elected, but the office of the commissioner is merely a creation of the Supreme Court rule. The commissioner screens a bunch of cases and all that, and that and makes recommendations to the court about what to stay or what to deny. But remember, we've talked about this. Usually the role of this kind of a staff attorney kind of position is really to, to filter out the dross. You know, again, pro se plaintiffs that don't know what they're doing, that are bringing frivolous lawsuits, or prisoners that are seeking habeas corpus, but they're not doing it the right way. Again, that's the sort of thing a staff attorney would do to get rid of the dross, to filter it out, save the judge's time. But when you're dealing with a fundamental constitutional right, the Second Amendment, a 55-page major opinion by a Superior Court judge, this is not the sort of thing that you would filter out if you're a sweaty civil servant commissioner. That's 
not what you do. You're supposed to handle, again, the silly stuff that really is frivolous. And because people don't know what they're doing, again, it's pro se stuff, prisoner stuff. That's what you try to deal with to help the judges save time. But this has nothing to do with that when you're dealing with the Second Amendment, the Washington State Constitution, a major constitutional issue, high profile political issue, major judge by a major opinion, issue in a major opinion. And yet, nevertheless, you got this sloppy, in my opinion, obviously sloppy unless the guy's a super duper speed reader and an expert in the second amendment and i have my doubts that's the case because if he were an expert in the second amendment he would not have stayed the order he would have recognized the power and the correctness of judge bastard's decision but clearly he did it wrong and the fact that commissioner johnson is talking about public safety issues uh tells me he is interest balancing away the issue he is ignoring the application of the constitutional test to heller and he's going right back to interest balancing which the supreme court has said you cannot do both in heller in 2008 and, and, of course, Bruin in 2024, uh, 2022. So to wrap up, let me sum up with this, how Stephen Halberg sums this up. This is what he says. Shocking events. This is what he says. For a state in which the justices of the Supreme Court must be elected, that is an incredible amount of power and discretion to delegate to an appointee. This case seems to illustrate how that power can be applied. Well, again, it seems to me that uh, this is not a good look for Washington's judicial system to have a commissioner step in and do this. Now, apparently, on April 17th, the commissioner is going to deign to allow Gator guns, Gator custom guns, to be able to actually submit papers in support of Judge Gary Basher's opinion and to actually have an opportunity to be heard. That's really wonderful, right? And we will see on April 17th if this sweaty civil servant commissioner does a better job. But as to why this case is in front of a commissioner is beyond me. This is the sort of thing the Washington Supreme Court judges to step in and be handling. Step up and do your job for crying out loud. Don't have a sweaty civil servant do your job for you. That's pathetic. Not only is it pathetic as a matter of fact, in my opinion, it's actually pathetic because it looks as if justice is not being served in Washington state. And I'm sure the judges on the Supreme Court are likely probably a bunch of anti-gun left-wing liberal activists. That's usually what you get in these urban areas and places like Washington state. But I could be pleasantly surprised. Maybe they come from the part of Washington state that's actually known as America. But I have my doubts. But only time will tell. Maybe I will be pleasantly surprised. So there you have it. Very interesting how this craziness going on in Washington State and Judge Basher's ruling and how it's being treated by the Washington Supreme Court is now starting to pick up in other quarters of the Second Amendment movement and all their quarters of uh, elite legal circles. So let's see what happens going forward. Very interesting. And I'm curious as to whether or not the U.S. Supreme Court justices and their clerks are picking up on this. I have a feeling they probably are, but only time will tell. We will see soon enough. So there you have it. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. I hope you learned something today. Make sure you uh, subscribe and resubscribe. We're trying to get to 150,000 subscribers on this channel as fast as we can. We're really far behind every other people. So help me catch up. And again, We'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.